So the kinds of issues that might face um, a new Ebola vaccine, when we would hopefully get one, are general concerns about, as I said, a new vaccine, something they're unfamiliar with. Is it safe enough? Um, will it work? Um, and then there are the issues about trust in the provider. Uh, we've had some, I think that one of the best parallels is with polio. Here's a vaccine that was tested, proven, high efficacy for years, decades now, and we still have major issues. Um, some of the same headlines in the newspaper about people's distrust of the, of the vaccine and the lengths they go to avoid it um, are, are very similar to some of the headlines we've seen recently about fears about Ebola. Um, not just Ebola itself, but the response, the distrust of the providers who are, are um, trying to administer, whether it's a vaccine or, or a, um, a control effort, um, especially if it's not people from the local village, the importance of familiar, trusted uh, providers, whether it's uh, health providers or people, caregivers, or in the case of Ebola, people coming to uh, do quarantine, um, help with burials. In the trust research, two th key things determine what people's decision to trust someone. One is trust in the ability of the person or the provider, and the other is the trust in their motive. Is the person's motive in my interest, or is it going to get them extra money from their supervisor for having done one more vaccine? Uh, what is their motive in terms of you know, our population, why are these people so interested in coming to us? And in the case of uh, Ebola and the, and the situation in West Africa, the general immunization rates have dropped, plummeted. Um, the anxieties about vaccines in general in an environment where there are great fears about Ebola and its transmission um, transfer to other types of vaccines. The other issue with uh, vaccine delivery that we've learned with polio is the importance of not making assumptions. I mean, there's a general tendency sometimes to think that if people don't want a vaccine, uh, they don't have enough information. The typical public health response is, oh, give them more information on benefit and risk. Give them more reasons why. And sometimes it's nothing to do with the information. There's something else about the delivery that they're uncomfortable with or distrusting. We had a situation in Uttar Pradesh in India several years ago where people were saying they don't want it because of where they've heard rumors or they've heard things. And actually, when we sat down with groups of, of some of the women, the real issue was they did not want their child vaccinated by a man. And they didn't want their child vaccinated by a man coming from outside their village, never mind all the way from um, Delhi, far away. Um, and, and these are even locals, not international staff coming in. And once that was changed, once women started administering the vaccines, the rates went up and the the anxieties of what they referred to as rumors were just something that they were saying because other people were saying, but that wasn't their real issue. So it's really important to understand why, because it may not be on the face of things what it seems. Having said that, the other lesson we learned from that is the importance of recognizing that every local situation is different. The importance of understanding not just the cultural dynamics, but the political ones are really important because you may be making a gesture that you think is very culturally sensitive, but it makes someone a political target. Uh, well, I think in West Africa it's the, it, it's the same issue. I mean, some of getting the right trusted leaders, understand, getting the community, and, and not all um, formal community leaders are the trusted ones. So it's really important to understand from the local community who are the people that are trusted that may not be formal leaders, but informal leaders, trusted whether it's religious or uh, the local school teacher or, or someone from the health center. Who do people trust? Who do they turn to in normal times, never mind times of emergencies, that uh, could be could be helpful, and we've seen in some settings it's really people coming from outside, of which there are many in the current response, that are, are really important to make sure that the already heightened anxieties are not aggravated but, but eased.